Delta Espinosa Fixed Income Strategist at Saxo Bank. Good morning and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for inviting me. So I'll say, of course, I'd like to kick off with the, with the data that we saw today, 268,000 um, initial jobless claims. This is almost, I said, almost perfectly in line with expectations. What's your take on, on the data? Uh, and of course, what is it suggesting in your opinion um, in regards to the US labor market? Well, we believe that actually the jobs uh, reports of these years have been uh, quite strong um, and they're hinting uh, to an acceleration of uh, um, the recovery of the labor market. The point is that uh, uh, the preliminary data that uh, were released every first Friday of the month uh, were uh, uh, had uh, to be revisioned and their revision, especially during uh, summer, um, was in much higher than uh, the, the preliminary data. So that suggests that, that the job market is on track uh, to recover. Um, and at this point, uh, the Federal Reserve uh, will soon uh, not be able to hide anymore behind this data when it talks about uh, uh, tapering or tightening economic uh, conditions uh, in the US. So talking about the Fed, first of all, um, do you think that it's kind of losing some credibility in regards to the transitory inflationary pressures? Absolutely, because uh, we are seeing uh, inflationary pressures uh, continuously to grow um, and uh, there are some pressures that uh, look to be more sticky than others. Uh, wages are up, uh, rentals are up. Uh, um, so everything suggests that, that this is a little bit more than transitory. Uh, but Alexandra, when we talk about the bond market, uh, um, the bond market doesn't really care if it's transitory or not, uh, depending for how long we are referring to that transitory. Uh, before when we were talking about the transitory, uh, people had in mind, uh, uh, had in mind uh, uh, some months, uh, right? But now it's becoming years. So we had the 2021 with increasing uh, inflationary pressures. It looks likely with that we are going to see elevated inflation also 2022. So at this point of time, seeing uh, the 10 years or well, the overall yield curve being so uh, compressed with very low yield that when inflation is so high is somewhat uh, unnatural. And uh, it becomes uh, uh, quite obvious uh, that uh, the bond market uh, is poised for our repricing. If it's not this year, it has to be the next year. Um, but uh, definitely it's something that we believe that we are going to see very soon. I was wondering, um, how do we find, or, or probably better, how does the Fed find an equilibrium between the, the fact that we have inflation and pressure to the upside, that's for sure inflation is higher than 5% in the United States on an annual basis. On the other side, though, we, um, the economic uh, situation is right as it is, as it was. Uh, before the pandemic. So nothing has changed in terms of economy. A lot has changed in terms of inflation. So do, do you think that there must be some, how can I say, specific behavior from the Fed in this kind of situation? Well, uh, the market now is expecting definitely the Federal Reserve to tighten, tighten economic conditions. And this is why we see an acceleration of uh, interest rate hikes expectations, at least for 2022. Um, however, that is not enough in the meaning that if we see inflation today, it makes sense that uh, the Federal Reserve uh, react now uh, rather than later because uh, inflation is something that feeds itself and it might be uh, that uh, this is going to escalate to even higher uh, inflation um, so right now we are lacking of uh, that response uh, but uh, also we are talking about a change um, of direction well more of the leadership of the federal reserve and that uh, if uh, if it happens it might be that it brings us uh, somewhere else uh, in the following few months and alexander I just want to highlight the fact that this year we had a quite dovish uh, Federal Reserve. The majority of uh, the members' votings uh, were tilting towards the dovish side. Uh, next year, uh, we have a majority of Oakish uh, members voting at the FOMC meeting. Uh, so definitely, we are going to see, to see that uh, Oakish tilt in 2022, which finally will accelerate uh, um, interest rate hike expectation and will bring uh, uh, bond yields much higher. Althea, do you think that um, the Fed is going to have a brand new Fed chair? 
Well, um, we don't know yet for or certain. Not, or not that brand new. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, um, we don't know yet for certain, but uh, it looks likely um, that it's going to be either Powell or Brainerd. And the difference between the two is that one is a lawyer, uh, the other is an economist. And I'm in the, an environment, a very uh, complex environment, where we see um, the inflation continuously rising and we see uh, the economy now slowing down slightly. Um, probably the best option would be to have an economist at the ha heading at the, the Federal Reserve rather than a lawyer. Um, and, and let me ask you one final take on the bond market, which is um, extremely interesting, by the way. We have higher bond yields here um, in Italy, BDP yields to be more precise. Then we have also a wider spread between the 10-year Italian and the 10-year German Bund. And of course, slightly higher uh, trade yields right now, the 10-year 1.60, up about 6 cents of 1%, and the third year almost uh, at the 2% mark, up about half a percent. I was wondering, what are your expectations in terms of yields um, until the end of the year? Do you, I mean, can we expect expect higher yields overall? Um, you mean in Europe or in the US? Both. Okay, in the US we stick with uh, our indication that we are going to close the year at 2%, even though right now I realize that uh, it looks uh, very unlikely because uh, we are far away from that uh, uh, target. But realistically, um, there is something important going on in the US, which is uh, still we have that uh, debt ceiling issue uh, that is compressing the, front, the long part of the yield curve because uh, during debt ceiling crisis, the front part of the yield curve spikes and uh, uh, investors seek uh, safe haven in uh, the 10 years US treasuries. But uh, that needs to be resolved and needs to be resolved by Christmas, basically. Um, so what is uh, likely to happen is that uh, that compressing force is going to be soon removed. And uh, at that point, yields will need to uh, finally break above that level that we touched this year, which is around 1.75 towards 2%. Um, in, uh, in Europe, obviously, if we see yields uh, rising in the US, um, European yields uh, would follow because they are tightly correlated. That means that uh, there will be more volatility in high beta sovereigns uh, such as uh, the BTP. But in our uh, long term uh, um, perspective, uh, we believe that uh, there is still this trend for uh, an harmonization of rates in the European space, uh, which will take the BTP boon spread uh, uh, basically much tighter than where it is, around 75 basis points. Uh, but that's, uh, that's a trend that we probably will see uh, throughout 2022 and not for 2021. What we saw this week from the 10-year BDP was over 1% yield, which was pretty interesting. And of course, many people are saying, at least what they're saying in Italy, is that the draggy effect uh, has been waning in these past months. Do you agree with them or are there other reasons for these uh, higher BDP yields? No, I don't believe so. I, I don't agree because I think that uh, the spike we have seen in yields has been solely due uh, to the communication of the ECB. Uh, the ECB, uh, when we have seen that spike, uh, sounded much more hawkish than the market uh, um, expected. And obviously, if you have a hawkish central bank, uh, um, it means that uh, you will need to expect much higher yields. And Italian yields, like I said before, they have a high beta, so they're more vulnerable uh, to this kind of news. Uh, but uh, realistically, I still uh, believe that uh, the ECB will need uh, to focus into maintaining uh, stable financing conditions across uh, the whole euro area. Um, so, and also, if you, we compare the ECB with the uh, US Federal Reserve and the Bank of England, uh, um, they are the central bank that is most likely to remain dovish because uh, they really worked hard in the past few years uh, to get inflation and they never, never uh, got it. And uh, at this point of time, um, I really think that uh, it's more likely to have a dovish ECB. Uh, so we will see um, uh, the European sovereign hills to be in check uh, rather than uh, those spikes that we have seen last month. Thank you so much. Othea Spinozzi, Fixed Income Strategies, Exo Bank. Have a great day ahead. To you too, Alexandra. Thank you very much.